What is up, Janksters? It's your boy Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet, and today we have a special deck. This is Mind Link Mech. Okay, I know I say every deck is special, but they are. Dang it, they're my creations. They're my babies. I love them. Anyway, this one is no exception. This is a fun deck. It is capable of producing some crazy explosive things uh, that are very, very fast. Fast, crazy, explosive things. That's what I love. It's what we're doing here, and please don't take that quote out of context. So, what we're doing here is built around Illuminator Virtuoso. This is a 1-1 one -one double striker for two that whenever it a target of a spell you control it connives which is great so as you can imagine we want to be targeting 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 yes targeting the illuminated virtuoso and we're going to be doing that with all kinds of fun spells we got boon of safety guiding voice homestead courage you know the drill we even have light the way this is a one mana instant notably that says put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or vehicle and untap it and then return target permanent control to its own hand you get to pick one mode or the other uh, so you can protect your stuff or bounce your or you can bounce your stuff to protect it or you can just buff it up and untap it so it gives you a lot of versatility and to be honest i feel like this is a card that fits in this deck and very few others so that's just fun i just like it um we also have slip out the back. This is another great way to protect our combo pieces and our key threats. Um, our, key, our primary key threat being the Illuminator Virtuoso, naturally. That's the one we really want to get going. We also have Leon and Light Scribe. Whenever you cast a co or copy an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control go plus one, plus one, turn on a turn. That's great. Our creatures can get real big uh, with that, which is nice. And then we also have Storm Chaser Drake. This is similar to the Virtuoso in that crazy things happen when you target it with stuff. In this case, when you target the Storm Chaser Drake, it draws you cards. So the Illuminated Virtuoso is going to be drawing and discarding and growing. The Storm Chaser Drake just straight up draws cards. Either is fine. I'm not mad at either of these effects. Now, you'll notice there's one card I haven't mentioned yet, and that is Mind Link Mech. Mind Link Mech is a really cool card. It is a 4-3 flyer for three. Now, whenever it becomes crude, and only has crew one, it becomes a copy of one creature that crewed it. One non-legendary creature, to be fair. So, this is, a, except it retains its stats. So, it stays a 4-3 flyer, but it gains whatever other attributes are of the thing that's crewing it. So, ideal situation... We jam Mind Link Mech on three. Turn four rolls around. We play out an Illuminator Virtuoso if one's not already on the board. And then we spend our remaining mana. Um, well, we crew the Mind Link Mech. And all of a sudden, Mind Link Mech becomes a 4-3 flying double strike creature that connives when it becomes targeted. We target it with a Homestead Courage, a Boon of Safety, a uh, Guiding Voice, whatever, what, what, what have you. Any of our little one-drop white spells that buff it. And so we buff it into a 5-3, it connives potentially into a 6-5. Uh, and then, you know, it kind of goes crazy from there. Um, and we can also hit it with a show of confidence. This is another spell that we have in here that can really take advantage of multiple spells being fired in a turn that can really buff this thing up as well and give it a bunch more connive triggers. So Mind Link Mac has an opportunity to grow huge if the Illuminated Virtuoso is what crews it, uh, which is just nice. I like that. I like it when my stuff gets huge. Again, please don't take that out of context. But I said it, so I stand by it. In any event, Mind Link Mac is a really cool card with Illuminated Virtuoso. We can do, also do fun things with the Lean and Light Scribe because the moment we have two of those on the battlefield, every spell buffs our creatures by plus two, plus two. So that's nice too. We like that. And with light the way the other inner interesting synergy here is we can tap a creature to crew the mind link mech and then hit that creature with light the way to untap it and it can jump in on combat too which is nice so if it already has some decent power and toughness we can use it to crew the mind link mech give the mind link mech its bonuses and then untap it and add it to the add it to the assault which is just just delightful um we also have a couple emergency buttons in the mana base we have hall of the storm dragon and cave of the frost dragon these are not our primary plans we do not if we are attacking with either of these something has gone wrong and that something is likely a board wipe when we didn't have a protection spell in hand it happens that happens against this deck a lot that is this deck's achilles heel is a well-timed meat hook massacre although even that's a little tricky because our stuff gets big but like a well-timed doom scar or depopulate can really kick this deck in the teeth so that is that is something that we need to be aware of and we need to play around we need to keep an eye on our opponent's mana base if they are presenting a potential board wipe we need to keep slip out the back or light the way up uh, so that we can protect our stuff because if we can protect our stuff through a board wipe if our opponent taps out in turn four or five for a board wipe hoping that it's going to be the answer and we do have the protection piece they're they're, they're done we win like in a lot of situations um with this deck specifically if the if the wipe hits though we probably lose so it's kind of that simple um 
Not always, but it feels that way sometimes. But in any event, let's run this out into the ladder, see what we can do. Also, this is my first deck tech that I'm recording since setting up a Patreon. Uh, I usually am going to leave it till the end to sh do that shilling, but I am gonna put it out there now. I do not have a Patreon, link is in the description below. If you enjoy these videos and you wanna support me directly, that is the best way to do it. Also, if you, are, if you want to, there are some sweet perks, uh, by the way, sorry. And if you donate $10 or more, you can actually, you will, um, I will gladly read out your name at the end of the video um, and say thank you personally uh, for that and for any of my Jack Tech videos. So there's that. And also, if you enjoy my live stream content over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash hammocks42, you can challenge me to build decks over there monthly with your Patreon subscription. So these are all perks that are available there. I'd love it if you check it out. It is brand new. I'm still learning how to promote it. Um, but more on that at the end of the video. In the meantime, let's jump into some gameplay and see if we can get Mindlink Mech popping off uh, and do some interesting shenanigans. So let's see what we can do. All right, we're going up against the one and only RPG Geeks, uh, or RP Geeks, I should say. All right, we've got the Lean and Light Scribe, as well as a bunch of cool spells and two lands. We don't have any blue mana, but we also don't have any blue spells. If we're drawn to some, that might be an issue. Um, but in the meantime, this is looking pretty good. Now, notably, we do get priority here because I like the way Ken bounce lands. I don't know why you would do that in standard, but it's an option. You do have that option. Ooh. Reclusive Taxidermist with the fancy Dracula art. Very nice. Storm Chaser Drake. Ooh, I wish I had a blue mana for that. That would actually be kind of the ideal situation right now, is an island off the top, or a pathway. I'd take pathway. Hmm, all right, they're ramping. They're be ramping. Hmm, light scribe bounce, I don't love that. Don't love that. That does, That is a good tempo play, puts us back a little bit. And the reclusive taxidermist can jam for one. That's kind of whatever, but fair enough. All right, Lightscribe's back, back again. We miss our third land drop. That kind of feels bad, but this deck can run just fine on two or three lands. Um, usually, like, three is kind of the sweet spot. If we get four... Um... Ooh, and they ramped into a Ren and Seven successfully. That's going to be an issue. Oh, well, all right. That qualifies as a thing. Does in fact qualify as a thing. We're gonna guiding voice on this homeboy, grabbing up the expanded anatomy from the sideboard. Got a 4 4 lean and light scribe crashing in on Ren and Seven. Is there. Yeah, all right, the innkeeper's gonna take one for the team here. Fair enough. All right. I believe my point isn't proven. Now that tree folk is only 3 3 right now. He's gonna draw them all the lands. Now they got two. Beside you on a lair. That's gonna buff this little homie up to a 4-4. Four, four. If they attack with said 4-4, four, four, we can drop a light away, untap this as a 5-5 five, five and jam with it. So that feels pretty good. Oh, they're gonna bounce it again? Boo. Boo earns. That's unfortunate. That was actually a really good play. That was a really good play. Island? You're not an island. Ooh. Pretty good, though. I'll take you. Absolutely. I'll take you all day, every day. Let's go. Um. Let's hit with the moon of safety. Put that shield counter on her and get our connive on. I'm going to discard the homestead courage. Because we can always flash it black back. Slip out the back. Back, 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 back. Guess who's back, back again, tell a friend. Slip out the back does us very little good here because we don't have, well, it actually does us straight no good because we don't have a blue mana source. So that's why was relevant. They're gonna out of war a bounce our creature again. Man, how much bounce does that deck have? Good Lord. They're creating a second tree folk token. <sighs> All right, this is actively awful. Encourage get our connive on. Discard a light the way. Play out the land. We still have the boon of safety. All right. Now it doesn't matter. All my 
best laid plans will be for naught if they just bounce this thing again, which is a non there's a non zero chance it's gonna happen. Actually, if the layer of the Hydra joins the fight here, I believe we just die, which is unfortunate because. Well, it's, it's unfortunate. I don't think like, I need to add any kind of ex explanation there. It's just, it's, it's an unfortunate situation. All right. Yep. Way too late. Way too late. Unfortunate. Oh, well. Luminary Virtuosa survives. Moral victory? Eh, eh. All right. Anyway, let's move on to the next game. I see two lands. I see some good threats. I see a couple spells. Luminator Virtuoso can... Uh, well, I think actually we lead with the Storm Chaser Drake is my thought. It's also not uncommon for the first threat that we mobilize to just bite it right out of the gate. So if that happens here, it happens with Storm Chaser Drake, not a Virtuoso. I'm okay with that. Hall is interesting. I would have preferred another white source, to be completely frank. Short Chaser's coming in. Vanishing Verse. Well, I can do something about that. We're going to light the way, bounce it back to our hand. And then play it out again. Ding, ding. All right, cool. And that was card neutral because targeting the Storm Chaser Drake drew us a card. All right, cool. That was all right. They got no value out of their Vanishing Verse. We have another Storm Chaser in hand, so we could have let it resolve. But what's the fun in that? Especially when they have an Infernal Grasp. But, I mean, whatevs. Whatevs, skis. It's fine. Leonin Lightscribe. Let's lead it out with another Storm Chaser Drake. But like I said... First threat we run out often just bites it. And that's not uncommon in this deck. And that's okay. These things happen. All right, we need to get some spells on. Hopefully a Homestead Courage we can flash back. Well, 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 that's not what I... Not exactly what I was looking for, deck. I'm going to show a confidence on the Storm Chaser Drake just so I can draw some cards here. This is also going to get in for some more damage. Hopefully we draw into some spells that we can work with. Ooh. That's not a bad one. Show of confidence into a show of confidence. Now, notably, they did uh, they did bolt their land in. So they probably have a Wandering Emperor. That's what I'm seeing here. But Wandering Emperor can only deal with one of these. So Storm Chaser Drake, thank you for drawing me all those cards. Oh, but you have Vigilance, so you're not going anywhere, baby. Yes. All right, Lean Light Scribe, thank you for all the buffs and for all the memories while we were at it. Should I have buffed? I should have put one of those... Um, I should have put one show of confidence on the Lean and Light Scribe to give it Vigilance. I yeah, would have made it Wanderer Proof. I missed that. That's on me. If I was live streaming, this is when I would ask somebody in my chat to punt me, which is a, uh, a colloquialism for a mistake. Nadar, the paladin that happens to be selfless. But see, what I wanted to do there was I wanted to draw all of the cards. That's why I targeted the Storm Chaser Drake every time. Because I wanted to get more card draw triggers. Um, was that, like, a little super greedy? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it totally was. Um, but I'm nothing if not a bit greedy sometimes. Storm Chaser Drake is going to crash in on Wandering Emperor. I'm just going to bite it. I'm going to hold the Illuminator Virtuoso. If they are sitting on any kind of like board wipe options, I don't want to make that appealing toward them. Um, they're going to Infernal Grasp the Drake. That is a fair choice. I can't be mad. And we are flooding out a little bit, which in this deck is a little tricky because we actually run fairly few lands. But actually with them at eight life, unless they gain life here, which they can't, this next dungeon level is scrying. I believe we actually have the win next turn. Unless they have a March of Otherworldly Light in hand that can deal with his Mind Link mech, we, we got it. Virtuoso. Activate the Mind Link mech, it becomes a copy. Gonna connive all over this beast. Kinda doesn't matter. I'm gonna let the 
Yeah, we got him. Excellent. Next game. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having fun. This, this deck is cool. It's it's very fun. So yes, yeah, so let's move on to the next game. See if we can do that again. I'm gonna keep this. We got three lands. We got a light scribe. We even have ways to protect said light scribe if it's looking threatening. I'm hoping we draw in some more creatures because light scribe is not the primary creature we want to have here. He's really not. I like him. He's nice, but one rep in blue so far. All right, makes me mildly nervous, except for the mildly part. Let's play outside light scribe so we can apply as much pressure as humanly possible. They're gonna fading hope it. Oh, maybe not. Okay, cool. They're gonna wait till we attack to fading open. Rune crab, sure. Mill some homestead courages. Give me that homestead courage. Cause that's flashback. I like my flashbacks. I mean, I like my cards with flashbacks. Let me let me put it that way. I like my cards that have flashback. That's nice. Uh, all right. Guess who's back? Back again. Tell a friend. Gonna guiding voice and we are gonna grab up and expand anatomy. So I want this I want this sucker to be thick. That's the goal. I want a chonky Lena Light Scrap crashing in. I wanna get them to a point where they the last thing they wanna do is uh not block with the ruin crab. That's the goal. We'll see. We'll see if we can make that happen. And they're running mono blue, but they're running the they're running the new Capenna fetch land, so that makes good sense. If, they, if their main goal is Ruin Crab, that makes sense. They have another bounce. They always do. But we have to play out of threats. We don't have a choice. We just need to try to get some threats on board. Another Light Scribe. You know what? We take those. They probably aren't running any mono blue board wipes. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty safe about that assumption because that's not a thing. So... Double light scribes. We could be in a worse state than this. We still have 41 cards left in our library going up against the mono, bl mono blue mill deck. This could be a lot worse. Now, that said, our deck is made up entirely of ones and two drops, but they only are only three drop being mind like Mac. If they touch the city's laughter, oh, we're so screwed. To say we are completely and totally screwed, drastic understatement. Understatement of the freaking year. Um, so let's go ahead and expand it. Anatomy. Expanded and atomized one of these. Boom, 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 boom. And then, I like the way it's an instant, so we attack. All right, our opponent did not like being pressured on the life total, and we were able to do that, so good stuff. Let's move on to the next game. Man, these Lean and Light Scribes have been clutch for us, but to be honest, I think I wanna mull this. Because if our opponent has a kill spell for the light scribe, we are just dead. I mean, well, we have to slip out the back to help it, but yeah, I don't love that. Here we go. We got a, we got a Virtuoso and the Mind Link Mac. Mm, now we're talking. Sorry, I keep doing this. I know this is a rude gesture in England, and I'm sorry. I don't mean to be flicking off the camera. That is not my intention. I promise. All right. We're keeping this. We're doing it all day or day. Let's go. I'm actually going to let slip out go. That could be bad. Could be dangerous. But I like to live dangerously. What can I say? All right, opponent's running white. I'm gonna sandbag this a little bit. We could drop the Illuminated Virtuoso here. Oh no, we're we're definitely sandbagging this. Cause they're running Orzov. They 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 have kill spells. They have an Infernal Grasp. I do not want to give them a target for it. Oh, they're playing Angels. Mm, okay, maybe sandbagging wasn't the right choice. All right, we we'll see. I might get punished for that, but here we go. Mind Link Mac, let's go. Mindling back has an opportunity to get absolutely swole here, and that's the goal. We want that we want that sucker to be just huge. Absolutely huge. Reg's Valk, sure, sure, sure. Natural lie, and they will crash in for two. That's fine. That is an acceptable, expected course of action. Mind Link Mech, getting crude. 
Ding, 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 ding. Connive action. I'm going to let that other mind link mech go. We don't need two of those. This is going to grab an expanded anatomy. Oh, yeah. Feel the pain. 12 damage on turn four. Not bad. Especially when we're trying to keep a righteous Valkyrie in check. Oh, we take those. We absolutely take those. Our opponent looking like, wait, what? How did the double strike, dog? Double strike. That's what it's all about. Ooh, and they are swinging with the team. They have to have some kind of... I mean, what... Are... They have to have a kill spell here, right? Like, they have to. There's no way they don't. Do we just load up the Virtuoso and go ham? Or do... No, no. We came here to Mind Link Mac. We're doing it. We're doing the Mind Link Mac action. And we have light the way back if we have to, but... I mean, I'm not going to spend any spells here. Because this is lethal. And light the way and show of confidence are both instants. So... If they have any kind of life gain. Valor stance... It's problematic. Let's get connive. Uh, I like that Virtuoso. I think I'm going to keep it. Uh, actually, I like that Stormchaser Jake too. Dang it. Um, I'll let the expanded anatomy go, mostly because it's more firepower than we need. Stormchaser! All right, cool. Now, if given the Valorous stance was their answer, assuming they didn't have another removal spell, we could have buffed the Illuminated Virtue or uh, Four or Greater. Actually, no, we couldn't have. It wouldn't have been enough. JK, LOL. So they're 12. The magic number is 12. Today's episode was brought to you by the number 12. All right, show of confidence, boon of safety, and a light low way. Light low way? Light low way. Oh, why not? I don't know why I decided to be French there for a second. That was fairly awkward. The block and the virtuoso. I can live with that. Just got the mech, I like guiding voice, that works. I would like to draw all of the cards, please. Yes, all of them. Vigilance is irrelevant because it's already tapped. The shield counter is going to keep our Virtuoso alive. Our opponent's got five damage on the crackback. And we have a light the way up. I can live with this. They have an opportunity to just tap destroy things, which uh, hopefully they do before combat. Uh, Righteous Valkyrie again. When double Righteous Valkyrie drops, it just reminds me that that card is completely cracked in half. And uh, way too good for three mana. In my opinion, Righteous Valkyrie is a very pushed card. And until recently, we haven't seen a good shell for it. But this angel list, like the moment Giada showed up, it's like, oh, Righteous Valkyrie is going to be going to be a player again. And it is. It's not like taking over things. It's not completely cracked the way that I expect it to be, frankly. Uh, less than this creature's power. Number to beats four. Let's see. No. Actually, let's see how is that worded. Destroy a creature with power less than this creature's power. So we can actually do this. And when we connive, we just have to discard a non-land. Buffs it up to a 4-4. Makes it no longer an eligible target. Boom. Let's go. That felt good. That was a pretty, pretty, pretty solid, uh, solid little move there. I thought. Check me if I'm wrong, but I thought that was pretty good. I'm relatively proud of that. All right, we're going to Guiding Voice the Storm Chaser. We got the Homestead Courage, everybody. We got it. We did it. Success. Um, I believe with the show of confidence, this is just game. Never mind. 
it's just a game. Check this out. We're going to Homestead Courage, targeting our Storm Chaser Drake. We're going to draw a card. That card's going to be slip out the back. That slip out the back is going to phase out their only blocker. Yes, I'm 100% sure. We phase out that blocker. We swing in. Boom. Followed by a boom. Got him. That is the power of slip out the back, everybody. That card is excellent. Don't sleep on it. All right. So that was pretty sweet. Let's move on to one more game. We got the combo. We have the mind link back virtuoso. We also have the moon safety back. Because we're, we're bringing safety back, everybody. We're doing it. Dumb joke. Totally stand by it. Let's go. So yeah, this is a snap keep. Now we need to draw into some more spells and hopefully some more white mana sources for those spells because we have more like significantly more white sources than or white spells than red one or red ones. Yeah, I hope we have more red, more white than red spells in a Nazorius deck. Don't mind me, it's late. I'm gonna be going to bed soon. <laughs> but we got the mind link back. We got the virtuoso. I'm gonna actually run out the storm chaser Drake first because that's an opportunity to draw us into some of our good stuff. Ah, uh, rune crab. As long as that mills from homestead courage is, I'm fine. Guiding Voice was sick here. That actually was a great draw for us. We take those. We absolutely take those. All right, you know what? Our opponent may be running some bounce. Yeah, and they're attacking with the Rune Crab just to get a little cheeky. That's fair. I'm actually gonna run, the, run out the Virtuoso here. Let's see if the Virtuoso sticks around. May not, and that's okay. To be honest, they might be thinking, oh, the Virtuoso is going to draw me, draw through my cards more. Oh, there is it all of a sudden. Tasha's, that wrecks us. Tasha's absolutely destroyed. That hit for 16 cards. Ouch. All I can say to that is ouch. All right. <clears throat> Mind Link Max Online. If they have another Tasha's, we're gonna be in we're we're in bad shape. Fabla, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Good card. Capable of doing good things. Alright. Another white source. That actually is pretty good draw for us. I'll take that. Alright, we're gonna throw Light Scribe. Leonin, let's grab. Yeah. Now they are holding priority here. They may have a two-mana counter spell. They probably have a fading hope. Is what they're probably sitting on. But you know what? I'm going to make them spend it. I'm going to make them use it. They don't have a choice. Boom, baby. Here we go now. Here we go. Expanded Anatomy. 6-5 flying double striker. Do you have that bounce? Yep, they did. All right, time to bail on the mind link mech. Unless we mind link and copy the... Yeah, no, copying the light scribe wouldn't be a good call here this next turn. Down to 17 cards in the library. This is not good. All right, the little Goblin Shaman connects. Teach by example. If they teach by example into a Tasha's, we're just... Or actually, Madden can copy... Yeah, no, oh, we're so dead. That's going to hit us for like 40. Yeah, okay, Mill got there. This is actually a phenomenal matchup for that deck because the mana cost is so low that Tasha's really racks it. So... It's all good. These things happen. This was fun, though. So you got an idea for what the deck is trying to do. We're trying to mind link the Illuminated Virtuoso, pop off a big crazy spells. Fun stuff. So, yeah. So thank you for checking out the gameplay. Let's get into the Patreon credits. This is a new feature that I've never done before. So bear with me here. Let's do this thing. I want to give a huge thank you to all of our lovely patrons. Now, the Patreon is fairly new, so you will notice there are two. Two members of the illustrious Patreon team. That is Josh Boone and Vale Rath. Thank you so much for joining the team. I appreciate both of you so much. And if you, the viewer, would like to have your name read out in these credits, check out 
patreon.com slash hamhocks42. There's also a link in the description below. Uh, for as little as $1 a month, you can have your name featured here. So please check that out. I would appreciate it very, very much. You can also check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash hamhocks42. I stream over there Monday through Friday, starting at 7 a.m. going until uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'd love to see you out there. It would mean a lot. Thank you so much. And also... Thank you for making it to the end. That's a big deal. Um, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please hit the like button and that subscribe button uh, over there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one.